Jay, just checking, uh, going to the same lineup tonight as the uh, last game? Uh, yes. Yep, we're going to the same lineup. Koskinen and starting. You look at, um, you know, you've had some practice time a little bit more lately, especially than your early first few weeks. How do you feel the team's responded now that you've had a little bit more practice time to implement different things? Um, I think the team's responded well. We're trying to um, be strategic in what we're bringing to the group in terms of things that we want to um, work on or themes that we think are important. Um, we want to be real focused in, in where we're putting our emphasis. And um, just having a few more practice days over the last seven to ten days has allowed us to uh, move in some different directions as well. The Cassian, Malone, Archibald line, it seemed to have a, a dynamic to them and as far as what they bring, some energy. You know, Cassian's first two games have been very energetic, and when he does that, he's a pretty good player. What, what have you liked about that line, and how big are you on having lines that have a certain identity that maybe is different from what other lines have? Yeah, I think uh, the three players that you mentioned all bring something different to the table. They're, they bring a form of physicality in different ways. Uh, I think of Zach Cassian as a straightforward, straight line, forechecking, punishing, um, punishing player when uh, he can get on top of defensemen and... Um, finish his check. I think Brad Malone uh, is physical in the face-off circles, willing to go to the blue paint, uh, also finishes his check. And I think um, Archibald brings a speed element, uh, underrated speed. And uh, for not a huge man, he's very physical for his size. And so when those guys uh, can establish a forecheck and roll around on a cycle and, and um, create, I think it, it gives our team energy. Can you talk about how Philip Broberg has been back and forth to the minors? What are you seeing now that perhaps is an improvement over maybe earlier in the year so he can play, you know, against these strong teams you've had the last couple of while? Uh, yeah, I see growth. I see growth. That's what I see. Um, rarely in young players um, that are just trying to establish themselves at the National Hockey League level, rarely is it ever just a straight line direct north in terms of uh, where their game goes. A lot of times they have to learn some lessons along the way. Um, I've called Phil uh, an experiential learner. Um, he's come a long way from that first rookie game against Calgary here in this building in September. Um, that process began in the American Hockey League Forum. He had uh, earned his first recall in, in November and uh, has been up and down with, uh, from Bakersfield ever since. And I just think he feels a lot more comfortable at this level. He's learning what his capabilities are are at this level and he's learning how good the league is and, and how it demands you to be at your best on a day in day out basis and his game is carrying the puck is that something that he would do in the American League but maybe he's a little hesitant to do earlier in the NHL where now he's carrying the puck again carrying playing to his strength yeah I think his legs are his best asset. Um, he does have a good level of skill. I think at this level, supporting the rush rather than leading the rush all the time uh, is probably more in his sweet spot. Um, and uh, recently, over the last couple games, I've seen him get his shot through from the blue line, and that's a skill as well, and he's just feeling more and more confident. Defenseman. You mentioned about the growth. Is it way harder for a defenseman than it is for a forward to break in at, at a young age? Yes. Yeah, I, I think it's harder for young D-men to establish themselves at this level. Um, it, it, I think you know, there's a belief in hockey circles that it, you really don't know what you get in a defenseman until he's played a few hundred games in the in the National Hockey League. That's them finding their their playing personality at this level. Um, I think for young men that um, are trying to work their way into this league, you, you have to understand how good it is that there are going to be learning moments, that there are forwards um, that prey on on mistakes with the puck and whatnot. And the one thing about being uh, 
a young forward, when you make a mistake, sometimes that's 200 feet away from your net. Um, and they have to work through four, four other people to get, to get there. Uh, when a young defenseman makes a mistake, sometimes it's, it's just the goalie that, that's there. Um, so um, we want people to play on their toes. We want them to not be afraid to make mistakes. But um, the fact of the matter is, is that you have to be really, really sharp to be a young defenseman in this league. Detroit has one of those players, Cider. What do you see when you watch film of him? I know you like talking about your own team, yeah. but he might be the rookie of the year. Yeah, he's a good hockey player. I, I had the opportunity a few years ago to see uh, him up close when Grand Rapids came down to Bakersfield, so I had a good viewing on what his skill set is. Uh, he's having a heck of a year and really drives that team from the back end. Uh, and Jesse, when will you know whether he's ready to play? How do you tell when a player has been out for a month if he's ready to play? Well, I think what happens is uh, we'll see how he, he did after the skate today, um, see how he responds. But it, it's a coordination between um, the team doctor, the team trainer, uh, the player, and the coaching and management staff. Um, but I think he's progressing. He felt uh, pretty good this uh, heading into the skate this morning. So we'll see where we're at. We're going to take it one day at a time with him. What about Russell? Uh, Russell out there. Yeah. yeah, Russell is starting to practice with the group. He's a little bit longer or farther away than Yesse would be. Um, but, uh, you know, he's taking some positive steps here. We're just, like Yesse, we're taking it one day at a time, but I think he's a little bit farther uh, away than Yesse would be. And next week, you perhaps hope that Nugent Hopkins can practice with the team? Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for him. He's made some good st good steps. He's healing, and uh, he is skating, so that's a good sign. He just hasn't joined the main group yet. Thank you. Um, yeah. I can hear you, Gene. So, just in case for our audience on Oilers TV, um, just wanted to ask you uh, when you look back at your coaching career, kind of NHL wise, it started in Detroit and. I remember Todd McClellan used to call it the Harvard of hockey. And uh, first off, what was that experience like being around uh, a franchise with so much history and guys like that around you? Well, it's where I cut my teeth uh, at an entry level in the coaching profession. So I'll always uh, hold uh, the city of Detroit and the organization, the Detroit Red Wings organization, close to my heart. Uh, at that time, it was... Um, uh, a team where I think our first year we won the President's Trophy. Uh, we went to the Final Four of the playoffs the next year, and then we won the Stanley Cup in year three. So uh, just elite players and elite people associated with that organization. I learned lots of lessons on a day-in, day-out basis. And as a, as a young man in the coaching profession, I just tried to have the attitude uh, to keep my ears open and um, gain as much knowledge as I could. And that didn't just mean coming from the managers or, or the rest of the coaching staff. It also meant the players because there were some real good ones that come through that program. And uh, I learned a lot just watching them, how they conducted themselves, how they prepared themselves, how they recovered, and, and how they approached games. Yeah, Jay, how did you get the job as a video coach and what did you know about breaking down film before you got to Detroit? Um, my my brother actually was a video coach in the National Hockey League. Uh, at that time, he was with the Minnesota Wild. And, um, you know, so I watched him and had a basic understanding. I was playing um, over in Europe and uh, an opportunity opened up. I didn't meet um, anybody on the coaching staff in Detroit until the first day that I started, which would have been probably mid-August of 2005. Um, you know, I think... Uh, being ready to finish my playing career and, and head into the coaching world. Um, you know, I had conversations with Mike Babcock, who was the head coach of, of uh, 
um, the Detroit Red Wings at the time and, and won the job uh, based on um, my passion for the game and my willingness to work hard and my understanding of how video at that time worked. I can tell you it's a lot different now. The technology is a lot different than it was at that time. So a lot of long hours for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I actually think uh, those long hours um, set me up um, to be a better coach long term because um, I had a, I learned how information moved and uh, how the best staffs operated uh, with a level of speed. So having that understanding and of of how to use information and uh, move information and and get it to your players in in a concise form. Uh, that's where, as I said, I cut my teeth as a coach, and I'm thankful for that opportunity. One last thing. The, the star players, were they into a lot of video? Lidstrom, you know, Datsuk, uh, Zetterberg, were they into video a lot? Were they knocking on your door saying, I want to see some video? Yeah, actually, I, that's where one of the things I learned about great players, and I would add, Steve Eiserman was on that team as a player. Um, Brendan Shanahan was on that team as a player. Robert Lang, Matthew Schneider, uh, these, these type of guys. What I learned was that those players craved any information that would make them a better hockey player. And they didn't, um, they didn't mind who gave it to them. They just wanted to know um, information that was going to help them improve. And... I think uh, that's a common trait of elite professionals in any sport and in any profession around the world is that they crave information that, that's going to help them improve. Thank you.